Hi, so today I'm going to show you how to tape down and press your graduation stoles. This is mine. Um, I have them on my website, which is indiascreatespace.com. I'll put that on the screen. So this is a 60 inch plain white graduation stole. Lighting's a little bit off, so it's kind of hard to see, but it's just a plain white stole. And I've already printed my image. This is my image. This is the top of the stole. This is the bottom. And basically the way that I set it up is I set it up so that the spot where um, I'm going to conjoin these sheets because all I had was the, uh, I think this is 11 by 17 paper, where they could join. There's no writing or anything like that that would interfere with the design. So it'll blend in a little bit better than if, you know, let's say the bend was right here, then that might, um, that would be a little harder for me to line up. So some people use the movable spray adhesive. I don't do that because quite frankly, I didn't want to buy it. It was like, I think like 16 bucks at my Hobby Lobby and I'm not paying 16 bucks when I have a way to work around it. Um, now, when I first started crafting, I probably would have just bought it because I just thought, oh, you need everything. You need to buy everything in order to be able to craft everything everybody else has. As I get further along in my journey, I'm realizing that a lot of things that people do out of convenience or people do a certain way because it's their preference can be done for with what you have at home or for really, really cheap or a lot cheaper than what you may have seen. So, especially when you're doing a small order, so let me adjust the camera and then I'll come right back. I'll show you how I'm going to do this. So these two cut in half. Now I'm going to do the same thing, this page, right down the middle. Like so. What I'm going to do is, first thing is cut across this right here. So we are not going to, do not cut the part on the top. I'm going to use that to overlap. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this bottom one, go straight across. You want to try and get as close to that line as possible without overlapping it if possible. side of the stove and this is all one side of the stove I'm going to sit this one to the side first while I tape these together and the way I'm going to do that is by yeah, let's see bring it down a little okay hopefully this is a little bit better of a angle for you guys so while off camera I realized that I had mixed up the side so I fixed it now um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up. This is cup. just heat resistant tape. I think I got this from Michael's for a couple bucks. And once you get it lined up, you can take your tape like so. Take a piece. And really, really small pieces. It's that big. Put these together. And then once my paint blobs are lined up, everything's overlapped well, I'm going to take this tape and take one. And without overlapping the design, tape it down to my paper. And then I'm going to take this other side. We're gonna do the same thing. 
once those are taped down into place, the next step is to pull it up like so. And then what I like to do is take and fold that extra tape back toward the back like that. See? And we're going to do the same thing on this side. Try and keep it in place because this one is really narrow. Pick it up. Fold that extra piece back across the back like that. And then we're going to do, we're going to turn it over now that we know everything's in place. We're going to do the same thing across the back. And that's simply take a piece of tape, tape this in place. And this is just going to keep everything nice and secure so we don't have anything moving out of place. So now we have the full length of the stove. Okay. We're going to do the same thing on the other side, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Bring you guys down again. it out nice and flat and then we're going to put our stove on top of this I'm gonna try and avoid those pin I had some pinwheels at the bottom of my design I'm trying to avoid those now I try to center the design now the stoves you can see through a little bit I don't know that you guys can see through it because you know, obviously, you're not right above it, but you can see through it a little bit. So I can see exactly where my design is going to be on this. So I'm using that to my advantage. And I want to center like this lettering here where it says 2021. I want to try and center that. And that looks good. Oops.
right, so we're at the heat press. This is my heat press. Um, it's not a big one. I want to get a bigger one, but this is all I have. So, again, make what you have work. All right, now you can see my heat press is set at 400 for 60 seconds. And let's bring our stove over. For my design with parchment paper, this protects the top plates of your heat press from getting that ink on it, which would ruin um, your heat press. And then you would have to cover it up. And so don't do that. Just keep your design covered. Anytime you sublimate, use parchment paper or butcher box paper. So I'm gonna hold this with my finger now because I need to move my heat press across. And we turn it. We're going to close heat press high pressure and you'll see it's starting to go down Taking that tape off. Woo, woo, woo. It looks so good. I see one imperfection there. Um, but I'm a stream perfectionist. Perfectionist, so it's one of those things that's like a part of the sublimation process that nobody else would find is necessarily an issue. So I'll be proud of myself. I say it looks really good. Take that tape off all the way across the back. All right, are you guys excited? Are you excited to see what we made? Well, it's so good. All right, let me show you. This is one half of our graduation stall. So let's see. Look at that. You can barely see where the papers were joined. It was joined right here. If I zoom in close, you can kind of see, but barely. We did a phenomenal job. So good job us. Okay. Now we're going to go and do the other side. I'm going to speed through the other side for you, but yay. We're excited. All right. Be. All right. <laughs> I feel weird. I'm talking to you guys and so weird i'm talking to you guys and you can't see me but let's see oh i dropped my stove yay we did so good <laughs> we did such a good job youtube okay let's go do the other side <laughs>
I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to make this custom graduation stole. This is a great seller if you have a sublimation business for graduation season. Everybody wants these and in 2021, people are really looking to make graduation special for their teens who have spent probably the last two years, a lot of them, um, doing online school and stuff. So this is a great way to market your sublimation business. I hope this helped you to be able to do this and make the process a lot easier for you. Please check out India's Create Space to purchase your blank sublimation stoves. They are $6 on my website and you can sell these little babies for anywhere from $30. I've seen people $30, $35 to people selling them with, you know, with bling on them or whatever for over $100 for these. So this is a great investment for your sublimation business in this season, so please check it out. Again, that's India's Create Space. It'll be on the screen, maybe right here. Or maybe right here. Or maybe right here. Yeah. All right, India's Create Space.com. Bye.